Hello, everybody. We are live this morning with our very first virtual Classics for Kids performance of 2021. Um, I am really delighted to be, well, coming to you live from my kitchen, but I'm here in the virtual realm with our performer, Connor Gray. Um, now, before I pass it along to Connor, um, I am going to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude that we're able to gather on the shared traditional unceded territories of the Squamish Nation and the Lilwat Nation. We are very lucky to live, work, play, and make music uh, in on these territories. Um, and now, if you have never um, watched one of these virtual classics for kids performances, um, there's, there's not much for you to do. You can sit back and relax. But what I will say is if you are joining us live, so that's at 11 a.m. on Monday, March 8th, um, we will be taking questions from the audience. So if you have a question for Connor that comes up during the performance, you can go ahead and type it into the uh, Facebook comments and I will pass it along to him. So um, we will be here for about 45 minutes. Um, so if you have any questions that come up during that period of time, uh, please feel free to type them into the comments. Um, otherwise, you can just sit back and relax. Um, we have some exciting um, bits and pieces coming up in this series in the coming months. Um, I don't have any dates to share with you today, but I can tell you that we will have um, the fabulous Greg Bruce, my <laughs> who happens to be my older brother, um, sharing um, some saxophone goodness with us in April. And um, we've got a couple of other performers lined up for um, later in the spring months. So I'm very excited to continue this series. It's been really great doing this series virtually because we get to see so many of you from um, places outside of Whistler, which is really cool. If you happen to be watching from somewhere that's not in the Sea to Sky Corridor, uh, let us know. You can comment and say hello from wherever. We'd love to know. Okay, that's enough talking from me. Uh, I am gonna pass it along to Connor. Hi, Connor, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Jeanette. Yeah, I've been really looking forward to this. And um, yeah, lots to go over. So how it's gonna go is I have basically three different types of guitars that I'll introduce. I'll um, do some playing examples. Questions are actually great. I actually, it's probably my favorite part about being a teacher is being spontaneous and responsive to questions. So ask me whatever you want, it'd be great. Um, yeah, so I'm I also would like to say that I feel grateful to live in this area in Squamish. I was born in Victoria and lived there until I was four and then I grew up in Calgary and um, probably started playing guitar when I was like later on, like 16 or something, 15, 16. And um, ever since I started playing, I, I never learned songs when I grew up. I would just make stuff up. I thought that's just what you did on a guitar. You just hear things in your head and you just use the guitar as a as an avenue to be creative. So that's what I did for years. I would just make stuff up all the time. And I loved that. I would play with friends and we would jam and that's how I really fell in love with music is just, um, just playing around with no expectations about how I thought music should be back then. Didn't know anything about scales or chords or I don't know, the music theory aspect of it. Until I uh, was playing in bands and um, my other guitar player in the band was a, was a music teacher and I was like, I know more about music than this dude. I should probably be a music teacher or something. Uh, it's funny to reflect on it so long ago, but um, I ended up meeting a man named Aaron at a music school and he, uh, I guess he saw something in me and gave me an opportunity to, to teach there. And that's when I really started studying music. Um, I wanted to know everything about it. Like, what are all the notes? How do I think about that? All the cool chords. And um, I've been doing it ever since. Pretty much I've been teaching for close to 12 years now. And um, yeah, it's an amazing gift. And so currently I teach at the Squamish Academy of Music, which is an amazing music school in Squamish, who I feel so lucky to be a part of. Um, yeah, I'm grateful to Melissa, the owner there, who gave me an opportunity to teach there. And now I've kind of just been rolling with it. And 
I got to say, one thing that I notice the difference between teaching in the big city and here is um, like the relationships that I get to have with all my students and their parents. I feel so close to everybody and it feels like I just know everyone. And uh, I appreciate that very much about this area in general. It's the close community aspect of Squamish and Whistler. Um, okay, I have a list here. How long I've been playing and teaching yet, history yet. I did write benefits of living a musical lifestyle. I'd like to talk about that for a bit before I get into the technicals of the guitar in general. And um, yeah, I teach a lot of beginners. I meet a lot of kids who play guitar for the first time. And often for kids, it's the first time where they face something challenging and don't figure it out right away. <laughs> I meet a lot of really fast, smart, kids and, um, and every kid is smart in their own way and then they start playing guitar and it's not easy it takes work um, you're gonna fail whatever failing means it's not gonna sound good right away and um, that's basically my job is to just build confidence and to show it's like it's okay this is what everyone goes through but keep trying look look what you you couldn't do it last week look you can do it this week keep going keep trying and um, even in my own life, after playing for so many years, I see, I see that there is no destination to get to. There's no final musical level that, oh, I've reached it now. I've got the music. Uh, it doesn't work that way at all. And yeah, myself, I feel like a complete beginner at all the times. It feels, sure, I know a lot about music now. But I also feel like I know nothing and I'm just scratching the surface and I find that to be very humbling and I constantly remind my students of that as well that there's no place to get with it it's uh yeah there's a quote that I really like I don't know who said it but they said every note that I play is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard and that just hits me it's like all right yes the beauty of sound how could I have forgotten again rather than setting this expectation, oh, once I can do all this and this, then I'll be able to enjoy the experience of music. And we can all just let that be as it is and just enjoy experience in the moment, enjoy the experience of music in the moment. So yeah, it's a great thing to always return back to, I think, in the pursuit of always wanting to learn more and to, to better myself as musician and teacher. Okay, enough philosophy. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, I have a type of guitar here. It's called a classical guitar. Oh, I actually have a fancy diagram that I can share now. Fancy diagram. Yes, yeah, so there are parts of the guitar. How does the guitar work? Well, basically there are strings. The strings are wound at one end and they are tightened to pitch. So they make an audible tone, a sound. It's different than like if you hit a drum or a crash cymbal doesn't make a tone it just makes noise right so there's a difference between like tone and noise if you can kind of understand that so we can hear that this is a note this is a note uh, we have the headstock this is the headstock this is the nut here where the strings sit um, these are the frets the dot inlays the pick guard I don't have one this is the bridge the sound hole obviously um, this is the fret board these are where you tune the the strings you tighten them up to, to pitch. Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically the gist of it. And how the guitar works, so to speak, is I hit a string, makes a sound, and when I'm pushing the frets down, what I'm actually doing, like literally, is I'm trying to make the string sit flush against this little metal bar here. So now when I'm pushing here, the string is only ringing from this exact point to there. So I've shortened the length of the vibrating string. And what do you guys think it'll do? Will the sound go up or down? Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the sound will go up, right? Right, so the sound is lower because the string is longer. I shorten the string, the sound goes higher. And I can keep shortening the vibrating part of the string and thus the sound goes up is the idea. Um, yeah, I don't know how deep to go with the whole <laughs> music stuff. I would like to tell a story though because I, I find this super interesting and um, 
we're gonna take a short trip down history and go like 2,500 years ago to the time of Pythagoras. I don't know if you kids in school learn about Pythagoras, but you will. I don't know if you'll like them, but you will learn about triangles and how to measure the internal angles of them. So anyway, Pythagoras is famous for the A plus B equals C triangle thing. Um, also, he was just a dude who was way ahead of his time in general, thinking about all sorts of things. And he was walking by one day, doing his thing, thinking about stuff, and there were blacksmiths back then, smashing their anvils. And he noticed that when two blacksmiths would smash their hammers at the same time, there was like this harmonic resonance that he was like instinctively aware of. He's like, whoa, what was that? And he wanted to investigate, so he did some investigation. He found that, let's say one of the hammers was 10 pounds, and the other hammer was 20 pounds. So there's like a, I don't know if you guys understand ratios, some of you will get it. There's like a two to one relationship. Let's say one anvil was two pounds, the other was one pound. It's a two to one ratio relationship. Okay, don't need to understand that, but I'll, I'll continue. So he created this thing called the monochord, which is basically just one string wound between two points. And he noticed that if you halved... So on a guitar, the 12th fret is exactly mathematical halfway. He noticed that if you halved the distance of the string, it doubles the frequency. Now, some of you may know the term octave. This is what an octave is. And currently in today's Western music, we have 12 notes. There are 12, only 12 notes on the guitar, actually. There are 12 notes on a piano, 12 notes on a clarinet. There's only 12. Actually, all the music basically any of you have ever heard in your life is made using only 12 notes, which is hard to believe, actually. And the 12 notes come from taking the distance from a fundamental to its octave and dividing it into 12 equal parts. These are the notes. All the notes in music come from that. That's all I'll say about the nerdy music stuff for now, but I think it is interesting and kind of good to know. Um, okay, so the type of guitar I have here is called a classical guitar. It's characterized by its sound, specifically. It's got a very round... Well, I'll play some stuff. Sorry, I just put a new string on this guitar, and it's going to continually go out of tune, so just bear with me for a sec. I have a tuner in front of me here. I'm not doing this by magic. Um, so I'll just play some stuff. And when I'm playing, just, I don't know, just notice the round, soft quality to the sound in contrast to uh, the types of guitars I'll play afterwards. So. of songs I'll play. Oh, right. I did want to... Eh. I'm winging this. I'm half winging this. I'm improvising on the fly here, but I do have a list. I'll, uh, I'll play another song. I'm going to play this same song on each of my guitars so you guys can hear the difference. Uh, I won't say the name, but I'm sure many of you will recognize it. played song ever and uh, for good reason it's beautiful in many ways so like why does the the classical have such a rounded sound well you probably notice I'm playing with my fingertips I don't have nails uh, so I play with my fingers which adds to the rounded sound and also the strings are wound vertically here right I don't know if you guys can see that but the strings are wound vertically what that does is it actually the strings 
it's, it's hard to show, but they kind of roll slightly. It's got a little like rolling mm -hmm. quality to it, so I can finger style it. I mean, you can play with a pick too, but that's kind of what it's made for. Yes. I'll play another example now. What do I got here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, so this is a song I made. Uh, I'm a composer. I've always, As I mentioned before, I make stuff up. This is something I made up. Um, check it out. If there's any questions but I'm, I'm happy to take any please hi we do have a question All um right. so somebody is wondering um how you would choose between an acoustic guitar and a classical guitar so what would be the decision making process for somebody who is maybe sort of new to new to guitar which one oh. is, is one better for a beginner I see. Yeah, that's the context I was looking for. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that there is. And basically, the main differences are, I mean, to be more clear cut about it, a classical guitar is simply easier to play, easier in that it takes less physical energy to play it. I don't have to squeeze as hard. The uh -huh. frets are a little like this is a little bit wider, so it's easier for your fingers in contrast to an acoustic guitar, which I'll be showing in a couple minutes here. It's got steel strings. You really got to pinch those things. It's just like, it takes more actual strength. So, um, although the other side of it is, if you learn on an acoustic guitar, you can play any guitar, right? You learn on a classical, you pick up an acoustic, you're like, oh, this is kind of hard type thing. So I learned on an acoustic guitar, but I was also older when I started. So, and in general, I think a good age, and this is not by any means like the way it has to be, but I found that kids who start a little bit later, as in like 10, seem to do better because like kids who are like six, seven, eight, it's just daunting. It's, their hands are small. <laughs> it's okay to have small hands, but it's just hard to get them around the guitar. It's hard to like have that hand strength to pinch the strings. And it's, um, I don't know, it can kind of break confidence because it, you know, so I say start maybe a little bit later. If I could do it all over again, I would learn piano or singing first. Uh, I really wish I learned piano. Won't get into why, but um, that's what I would suggest. Mm -hmm. um, and Connor, do you, when you have a young student, say under 10, yeah. do you... I mean, do you, I know they do make smaller guitars, like a Little Martin yeah. or a Baby uh -huh. Taylor or something like that. Do uh -huh. you recommend that those kids just start with a smaller instrument? Or oh, yeah. do they like to play? Is, is elect, where's electric in this mix? Good question. In terms of the young youngsters. <laughs> Probably the best way to go, simply because it makes the coolest sounds in the easiest way. It's just awesome. You plug it into an amp, you get like sweet effects and like, you can bug your older sister, just crank that amp. <laughs> uh, yeah, electric's just like the most fun, you know? You can turn up loud, get all the cool stuff, and so. But, you know, there's the other side of it. You learn an electric, and you put an acoustic in your hand. You're going to have to almost relearn it. They're just different instruments altogether. So, yeah, hope that answers things rather than brings up more questions. Yeah. Okay. 
Shall I continue my monologue? <laughs> Great. Uh, okay, I wanted to play one more example, just because it's fun to do one in classical. I don't get to do it often. Um, see if I can actually play this. going out of tune one sec i can't stand it while, while you tune i just need to yeah. say that we recently watched once upon a time in mexico which of course features mariachi music very heavily yeah <laughs> so i'm i'm really enjoying this oh awesome yeah i don't do it often but hey i figured i'd just wing it oh absolutely uh, yeah okay, let's try it one more time mm. try to play fast Anyway, that's all I got for that. Okay, on to the next. And yeah, once again, any questions you guys got, let me have them. I'm more than happy to to share. Um, I there I do have another question, uh, which which is about that song. <laughs> yeah. Um, which you know, uh, of course, uh, always reminds me of Wayne's World and the store, the the sign in the guitar shop that says "No Stairway." Um, nice. <laughs> um, what what type of guitar? And may and sorry if I'm I'm assuming you'll know the answer to this. What type of guitar is actually used in the recording for "Stairway"? Do you know? Uh. I don't want to say something that'd be incorrect, but I think I think they use it. No, I, maybe we should just look it up quick. Mm. Uh, We're asking the internet. Guitar used in stair way too heavy. I want to say electric, but it might be a twelve-string acoustic. Right, right. Uh, two guitars, a harm, harmony, sovereign, something acoustic, and a twelve-string. Ah. And your electric 12 strings. Aha! So I thought there was a 12 string in it. A 12 string guitar is just a guitar with 12 strings. However, each string is doubled. So there's this E, and then another E, and then this A, and then another A, and then they're in octaves of each other. Mm -hmm. So it's just gotcha. like, it's like super bright and full, awesome sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is an acoustic guitar. It's a beautiful guitar. I'm so lucky to have this. It's called a Lerave guitar. Super fancy thing. Um, made in Canada, actually, by a dude named John Lerave. So, acoustic guitars. Um, I mean, it's different in sound mostly, mainly because it has a different type of string. All the strings are metal, metal strings, opposed to nylon, like plastic strings. So it's very bright. <laughs> Probably knows, I don't know if you know, but I'm using a pick now. Uh, this is a pick. It's a plastic thing that you hit the strings with. And it sounds clicky and nice. So, um, works the exact same way. The strings are wound between two points, tightened to tension and tuned. Um, but it's wound horizontally, meaning no rolling thing. You can still finger pick on them for sure, but I think they're kind of more going for that like bright, shiny sound. Excuse me. Um, other than that, I mean that's that's basically that's basically it. I'll I'll play something. I'll play hmm. quickly. Maybe I, I would like to talk about some stuff. Um, I'll play a scale. It's good to know about scales. Scales are part of music. <laughs> everyone should probably know them. No one, <laughs> and when they're starting, no one knows why they should learn them, but their teacher's like, you should learn scales. So just do it. Uh, this is a scale. It's A scale is just a pattern of notes that sounds good, basically. It's a good way to think of it. And there are different types of scales. That's called a major scale. 
There's also things called minor scales, which sound different. So you may notice at home that one sounds a little bit, you could say brighter, happier, right? The other's a little bit, a little bit darker, almost feels like nighttime. That's why I think about it. And in the same way that there are major and minor scales and varying degrees of major and minor, we won't get into it, but um, there's also major and minor chords. This is a major chord. Maybe I'll just play a bunch of major chords and whoever's sitting at home can just listen to how they make you feel. These are also major chords too. just playing randomly. Major chords are characterized by, well, people will say they sound happy. Um, I don't necessarily agree. Sure, it makes me feel good. It, to me, it more feels like, and one that I like to use lately with my students is, imagine the sun coming up. Does the thing, right? It's like, ah, oh, yes, the sun is clearly coming up with that chord. Almost feels like morning time to me. Minor chords. Totally different, right? It almost sounds, some might say sad. Not always true, but that sounds fine. To me, it almost feels more like nighttime or like moon energy. Kind of feels like the moon's coming up or something like bats are flying around or it's spooky or, or something opposed to major. Ah, things are happy again. So those are the basic two main types of chords. Um, it's basically used everywhere in music. Okay, that's a little bit about that. Any questions about chords or anything? <laughs> if not, yeah. Um, Connor, I'm wondering if you can comment on the, the in both the mi minor and the major to me, Mm -hmm. um, there are some chords that feel like they need to be resolved and then sure. other chords that just feel, I don't know, um, like they yeah. stand on their own. Can you, can you talk to us about that a little bit? That's a great point. Um, I'll try not to go too deep into this because this topic is probably my biggest obsession in music. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I love chords and, uh, I study them all the time. I have a job on the side actually where I... <laughs> somehow have a job writing chord progressions. Um, so I think about that a lot. Um, and the interesting thing is like, well, why do some of these chords sound good on their own? Like what's going on here? And there's a lot more going on than, I wanna say meets the eye, but that's not the right expression here, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, because every time I play a chord, and then I play another chord, and then I play another chord, our, our brains are keeping context of everything that we've heard. We don't, just, we don't just lose total memory of what we heard and then hear each chord independently on its own. We're always hearing them in a context of the chord's relationships to each other. So even though I'm playing random chords, just playing them at random, our brain is linking everything together and we're hearing them relative to, there's a term here, whatever the key center is, whatever the most home feeling chord is, all the other chords will feel a degree of away from homeness, which gives them their characteristic sound. But now that I've been talking for a little while, if I just play a chord, we will hear it on its own and it will stand on its own. <laughs> I can just do that. But as soon as I play this chord, now we hear it relative to the chord I just played. Now they have a relationship to each other. This feels like home, and this feels like a degree away from home. And this will feel a degree too. Thing. So I set our ears up purposefully uh, 
you can kind of think of chords as I think of them as arrows and they're always pointing to different chords and after thinking about it a lot I kind of know where the arrows like to point so I set our ears up there I'll do it one more time so this is home maybe you guys can tell we've gone somewhere something's happening Um, I did say, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to yeah. say that is a great explanation of what I think is a pretty complicated <laughs> concept. So, yeah. so thank you for that. And I also deeply um, relate to you having um, an esoteric passion for, <laughs> for chord progressions because my thing is overtone singing. I find oh, it wow. endlessly fascinating. Not that I can do it, but that I am deeply fascinated by it and almost nobody wants to talk to you about that so oh man i wish i could remember this girl's name but she can she, she can sing overtones and like keep her voice the same and go up overtones she can like go up in scale steps she can like drop her voice down and like it's insane that's so amazing for everybody yeah. watching who has no idea what we're talking about i think you should just google overtone singing but yeah. if you've heard throat singing uh, Inuit throat singing is a type of overtone singing. So, anyways, mm -hmm. we'll we'll leave it at that. <laughs> That's right. Please proceed. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe I'll talk for just two minutes about that overtones, um, and I will play this note and ask everyone. It's a funny question, but how many notes are playing? <laughs> What do you think, Jeanette? How many notes are playing? Well, I I want to say that I know it's more than one. <laughs> right. How many can you hear though? Like mm, honestly. Mm. I mean, at at first you just hear one. Yeah. But I think if you listen more closely, you can. If you know that you are supposed to hear <laughs> that's, more that's than the, one note, sure. that's the trick. Um, you know that there are there are resonances happening above and below the note that we first hear. Is that would you Get say that's idea. correct? Sure. <laughs> yeah, it could also be a trick that you're playing on yourself, expecting to hear more, but maybe there is actually only one, and it's a complete trick question that I asked. But uh, yeah, you're you're right. And kids at home, you know, when you throw a rock into a pond, how many ripples happen? Is there just one ripple that comes out of the water? No, there's like concentric overlapping rings that appear. The The ripples create more ripples and create more ripples. And it happens at uh, specific ratios. And a string does the same. Like, what does the string look like when it's vibrating right now? I know it's a really hard question to think about. Is it vibrating just once? Well, it's actually vibrating at one half the string, one third, one fourth, one fifth. So this string creates ripples creates ripples creates ripples and all sorts of <clears throat> notes are actually playing one sec i'm just going to clear my throat so we can hear those other tones and it's true there is not only just one i can actually only hear one but what i can do is i can block the fundamental and one of the extra rings we can hear so i'll do that by doing this Okay. I'm not creating that tone. It is fully present in this, but I'm blocking the fundamental and that first, I'm going to relate it back to the rings. We see the first ring and that's what we're hearing. Uh, there's more of them. So this tone, I don't know how well you guys can hear it on the, on the screen, but. So that sound is completely fully present in this sound and there's also this and this and it keeps going basically into infinity pretty much but outside of our audible spectrum so yeah Jeanette you're right there are all these other tones that are playing simultaneous to this and uh, that's all I'll say about it
Yeah, thanks for the question, though. That is actually fascinating. Okay, I did promise I would play Stairway on another guitar, so here it is. I am finger picking it. I can't, I can't play it with my uh, with my pick, but you'll get the idea. And just notice that it's a little bit brighter uh, sounding than on the classical, right? This is the word that comes to mind. The classical mm -hmm. sounded warmer. Sure, yeah. Would I you so would you say I, I, like I was thinking about the word round, which is what you the yeah. terminology you used, and I think yeah, like fuller, rounder, warmer. Yeah. But I would never have consciously said that the acoustic sounds opposite of that, and I don't think opposite is quite the right word, but sure. Uh, yeah, so interesting to hear it in, in contrast. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's very cool. Oh, and you reminded me of something. Uh, I'll, I'll play a chord, and then depending on where I hit the string, as you'll tell, it's going to completely change the tone. So if I play way over here, close to the bridge, let's hear what it sounds like. Super clicky and like bright and like metallic sounding. And as I move away, until you can play all the way over here, sounds like I'm playing a harp now. So I consider that when I'm playing and I want a particular sound. Maybe I want a super soft, like dreamy. And maybe if I want a, the same chords, but a different sound. Or it's like literally completely different. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And all guitars are the same. I think guitars are probably one of the most like versatile instruments. I can bend the string. Yes, how much you can do with them. I won't even get into all this stuff. Um, how much time do we got? Am I good to go up to the, the hour? I still got much oh, to yeah. say. Yeah, totally. Um, I Before you go on, can I ask, yeah. so is it yeah. the default to play the strum or finger pick right over the sound hole? Or is it actually, do most people kind of go to one side or the other? I don't think it matters too much. Um, I think maybe it has more to do with like the size of the guitar and how long the person's arm is. <laughs> I think that's probably a part of it. Me, I'm a lanky dude. <laughs> I'm an adult, I have, you know, so I can kind of judge where I play it. I do tell kids to avoid playing over here just because they're probably going to like scratch their guitar with their pick. And it's probably good practice to learn how to play over here. But everyone's body is different. So there's no like this is the way to play guitar. It's different for everyone slightly. Um, so yeah. Okay, I wanted to, um, this is actually a song that I wrote like literally 10 years ago. So, and I remember it, I remember it before we were gonna play. I was like, oh yeah, that thing, that'll sound cool. So this is like fast strumming uh, with a pick. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
yeah, so uh, that's Honor, the acoustic. We have, we, we have a question from an audience member. Please. Um, who is asking, as an adult approaching their first musical instrument, would yeah. you still recommend learning piano before guitar? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, yeah, you want to learn guitar, go learn guitar, you know? But I, I think that for me anyway, early on, a, a piano is just like a map of melodic distance. And it's easy to get your head around because there's two black keys, then there's the three black keys, and then that pattern repeats. And the white key next to the two black keys is always C. Like C looks like C, you know? So it's 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 easier to start getting a good sense of like the way music works and what it looks like and how to think about it, to use the piano as a map to think about stuff. On a guitar, it's like, where is a C? It's like you, you literally have to just memorize everything. Not that you need to learn the notes to play guitar by any means, but um, that's just for me. You're an adult. You want to play guitar? Go get a guitar and start learning, you know? Um, yeah, that's what I would say. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a trick question because the answer is, why not learn both? Hmm? Well, yeah, that's not necessarily a trick question. I think it's good to pick one thing and just do that. Uh, I mean, I can only speak for myself. If I try to do too many things, I don't end up doing anything. Mm. It's like, oh, I want to learn piano. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to this. I want to wake up and do this and that and this and that. It's like, I don't do it any of it. So mm. pick one thing and just do that, I think. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's my advice. Okay. Well, that's the acoustic guitar. I don't play this thing enough. Last but not least. One sec. Okay, this is my baby. <laughs> it's very fancy. Uh, it's an electric guitar, pretty slick and sleek looking. Um, electric guitars, they're like any other guitar. Um, but I have a cable, this thing, it's running actually into an effects pedal. So it's just like a cool box. I don't know, maybe I can show you guys. Let's try this. So that's my effects pedal here. It has a bunch of knobs and buttons and stuff in this little thing. And that little red box, uh, it's a loop pedal. So it traps sounds in it. And then I can control when I want them to play basically. And everything is coming out of this amp in the corner there. I know it's hard to see, but there's an amp there. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna fix this one sec. Okay, so yeah, electric guitars. Well, um, they got knobs and switches and things. This switch, uh, actually. It has a special type of pickup in it, which also picks up the acoustic sound of the strings. And then I have these magnetic pickups here, uh, which also pick up the sound of the strings, but not just like the raw acoustic sound. So unfortunately, I don't have a battery in it, so I can't actually show the, the acoustic thing. But another fancy thing about this is it has this bar here. So there's kind of a cool system going on where the strings are also wound, but they're not just fixed. Uh, it's fixed at one point, but there's also a spring system. I can't show you. Know, you can kind of see there's springs in the back here. And the springs and the strings are tensioned so that this sits flush and flat. So my guitar is in tune right now. <laughs> How's my audio on that, by the way? Is that loud enough? Okay, great. Um, but I can also hit a chord and push down on this, and it loosens the strings and makes like blah, blah, blah. It's kind of cool. That sound makes me think about surf rock. <laughs> yeah, it totally does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. And uh, it also, this one's fancy because I can also pull up on it. So I can, it's kind of a funky sound, but. 
It's hard to use tastefully. I'm not in any way a master uh, or even close to anything like that at the whammy bar, but it makes my chords sound cool. Uh, another cool thing about this is it has locking tuning pegs. So these little things, once I tune it, I lock them into place so that when I, uh, sorry, so that when I do the fancy whammy stuff, my guitar stays in tune and it doesn't go out of tune. So I'm into that. Um, Okay, so this switch here, and basically every electric guitar is like this. There's this pickup, there's that pickup, sometimes there's the middle one. So this switch is controlling which pickup is taking information from the string, converting it into an electrical signal, and amplifying it out of my amp. These are magnets. Uh, do I understand how they work? No. <laughs> I'm not a gear nerd dude by any means. I don't know the, the woods of the fretboards and what's better. I, I really don't know. Um, I'm just like a, I know what feels good after playing so many guitars. So, but let's take a listen to the difference in sound. So remember before I mentioned that when I hit the strings here, it's softer. And when I hit the strings down here, it's like clickier and brighter. So um, the logic would be the same that if, information was being taken from the string here from this pickup it's going to sound rounder right so that's what this switch does i'm telling it i want to use this pickup to get the sound from the string so i'll just play some stuff <laughs> I, I wanted to have a whammy bar literally for years and then I got this guitar during Christmas and like yes it's so good um, okay so that's what that sounds like another thing that I should mention is I don't know if you guys can notice but if I play the the guitar and then stop you'll notice like an echo so that's an effect called reverb which basically gives the effect of being in a large space even though I'm in a tiny house <laughs> Um, okay, so now I want to use my other pickup. I want to get information from both pickups so I get that like nice round sound mixed with the clicky awesomeness. So hit my little switch. I know it's hard to tell probably over the thing, but... Opposed to... different. It's very subtle. Um, in live you'd notice it more. And then you might ask, well, how do I know which one to pick? And um, whatever your, the sound you're looking for, you know, if I'm playing in a band setting and I don't know, one of the other guitars is playing all the bright stuff, then if I'm playing really bright guitar too, I'm going to be clashing with the frequency spectrum of their instrument, right? So if I use a different tone, all the bright frequencies that that guitar is playing, I can add to that rather than take away by flipping my pickup and getting different frequencies. So now they now they aren't clashing for space rather than everything's bright. If that kind of makes sense to everyone. Uh, okay, so then there's the last one, which is the brightest one. I'm getting all the information from way down here. Uh, I guess it's more for like soloing and stuff. I, I don't ever use this tone for just playing chords and stuff. Kind of sounds bad. Plus the tone doesn't sound very good right now anyway, but... So I'd probably go with or this one big difference. Okay, enough of me blabbing. I'll play some stuff. Um, unless there's any questions before I play. Okay. So I did have a plan of playing some song. I guess I did say I would play Stairway quick. Let's do that. And actually what I'm going to do is loop Stairway. I didn't plan on doing this, but I'm just going to wing it. So I'm going to trap Stairway to Heaven in my little box <laughs> and then do what I, whatever I want with it. So let's try that. Um, hopefully I get a first try. One sec. 
Okay. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, so my little box is playing Stairway. Now I can play stuff over top of it. Think about what chords are playing and add a harmony to it. Uh, let's see if I can actually do that live. Okay, so I'm thinking chords now. So I can do this. I want a different tone. Let's get some cool effects going here. So this is a chorus. Look at the idea. I'm just improvising, winging things. Okay, so what is going on there? How did I do that? Uh, I'm just thinking, I'm not going to get into chord theory right now, but there, there's a chord, then there's another chord, then there's another chord. I know what those chords are, and I know how to play them in different spots on my guitar. I know what notes are in the chords, so I play the same notes in my solo, is the idea. Um, another cool thing I'm doing there, maybe I'll just show some cool effects for the kids, because its effects are awesome. So this is an interesting tone. It's like a lead tone, right? If I wanted like, I don't know, do that like guitar god stuff from like the 1980s. Uh, sounds pretty cool. So another effect you can do is tapping. So I can tap on my guitar and make cool sounds. So here's something I made the other day just for fun. could go. So that's pretty neat. Um, I wonder if there's any other cool stuff I can do. Yeah, well, one of my favorite effects is uh, the chorus, and I will show everyone my favorite chord on the guitar. It's this. It's just the best sound possible on the instrument. Plus this tone, it's just like the most dreamy thing. I'm really into just like dreamy, soft stuff. I like the fast playing stuff too, but man, I just love those, I don't know, deep, cool, <laughs> dreamy things. I don't know what other word to use to describe it, but whatever the sound is. Uh, 
Um, here's a cool effect. Um, maybe you guys can tell what it is. Who could tell what that was? <laughs> if there's anyone who wants to answer. Or Jeanette, do you know what that was? What was I doing? I guess I would say that's like a delay. Is that is that what that's called? Kind of. Kind, kind of. of. Technically, it was uh, reverse. So mm -hmm. if I if I, for example, slide way up, it goes down. So yeah, it's kind of a funky little thing. And there's all sorts of effects and knobs you can get, and delays and reverbs, and I mean, you name it. I can do some pretty crazy stuff on this thing that sounds like computer music, but. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the three types of guitars. Um, I've somehow ended up, ended up monologuing for an hour. Uh, yeah, is there anything else that I, that I could talk about or anything well, you want to ask? I, we've learned a lot. Um, so thank you, Connor. Um, I guess, I mean, well, this is probably, um, a hard question to answer, but do you have a favorite guitar to play maybe it's not a hard question favorite guitar to play yeah yeah oh yeah i'm holding it right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> okay. i love I this guitar some people would say they're all my babies you know like i uh, how do i choose but yeah i like a definitive answer oh yeah this is like by far the most playable responsive beautiful guitar i've ever played let alone had the luck to own mm -hmm. so yeah absolutely love it don't even get me started on raving about this thing <laughs> and you've fulfilled your lifelong whammy bar dream so oh that's yes very exciting <laughs> pretty stoked well, not, not gonna lie yeah um well Connor, i'm wondering do you want to play us out like is there a one last number that you'd like to share before we sign off sure yeah yeah All right. i can uh See if I can loop that. I haven't played this in a while, but let's give it a go. Yeah. Yeah, I used to perform. Um, not a lot, but when I do perform, I do live looping. So kind of what I do here, except it's not so improvised. I have like a, a set that I that I do. Um, this is one that I'm that I used to play. I haven't done it for a long time, so we'll see if I can do it now. Let's give it a go. Just one sec. Okay, how do I do this?
Okay. That was awesome. Thank you. I think that was the perfect, like, uh, what you were describing, sort of the dreamy, uh, I don't know. I think yeah, that's I know, the best, right? That's the best word for it, dreamy. I know. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. Like, when people ask, like, oh, what's your style? What do you play? I'm like, I don't know. I've been told I play psychedelic future jazz. So that, <laughs> I'll take that. That sounds pretty cool. I yeah, like that. Definitely. Yeah. Um, well, Thank you so much, Connor. Um, it has been a real pleasure learning from you and hearing from you today. Um, any any other last, anything you wanna share with our audience? I know you already mentioned Squamish Academy of Music. Yeah. Um, any, anything else, Do you, like are, are you on social media? Do you want to promote anything? <laughs> Thanks for asking. And um, I'm not on social media. Um, mm. I don't record music. However, mm. like I feel, firstly, like sincerely grateful to have this opportunity to do this. Um, I really feel like this year, I want to just share myself. And I've never done that before. I've always wanted to, but I just don't. I just hide in my house and I just teach the music. And so it's been very nice to just do this and to just be with everyone, whoever's here and to just share, to just share. Because I do, and I every time I do this, I'm like, oh, I actually love just talking about guitar and music. So, yeah, I, I would say that it's never too late to start, right? Mm -hmm. And like I was saying earlier, there's no destination to get to. Doesn't matter if you think you suck at music or you're the greatest ever, it's like, both are equal in their experience of music. If people think that I'm there, I'm the music teacher, I know the music, it's like, no. It's like, I feel I feel the same as I did when I first started playing. And all of those descriptions of, you know, I should be here now, I should know this, music should feel like this, it should be like this, they're doing that, I should go, this whole kind of game that we do with ourselves, we don't have to do that. And we can just enjoy playing music. Uh, so it's always a good reminder for myself to hear myself say, it's like, right, yeah, how could I have forgotten yet again? But, uh, so yeah, it's not too late to start. And for those who do play, but wish that they could play more, keep things simple. Um, firstly, don't have your guitar sitting in its case in your house. Mm -hmm. Just take it out of its case and just put it in the living room. You're more likely to pick it up. Me, I like literally have a guitar written next to me whenever I'm sitting at my desk. I'm like, oh, guitar. Rather than like, oh, my guitar's in my case back there. It's like, no, not happening. And it doesn't need to be, oh, I need to play for an hour. I need to play for an hour. I need to learn all this stuff. It's like, no, just like play for five minutes. Uh, that might turn into 15 minutes. And the hardest part about learning anything is just deciding that you're going to do it. You know, and I, I know that so well in my own life. All these things that I want to do, but as soon as I'm like, I'm going to do that right now. It's like, that is the most difficult part of just picking the thing up. So maybe I can inspire someone out there to just pick it up because it's fun <laughs> and it sounds cool. Like, that's all we're doing here. We're just making cool sounds. That's literally it. At the end of the day, we're making cool sounds and it's fun. So, yeah. I love that. And I, you know you're very much on the on the same page as the library and because of course we love lifelong learning and we also believe that you're never done learning a subject oh, yeah. um, you can get better and better at it but you um you don't ever stop learning um and my one of my favorite like i don't know it's kind of a cheesy like corporate motto but i it does speak to me is fail the word fail is just first attempt in learning sure that has that has gotten me through some <laughs> some failures <laughs> yeah that's so, great yeah so don't be afraid of sucking i guess is what i am <laughs> it's is what that means just exactly let yourself fail sometimes because you'll learn something from it <laughs> yeah and just take those take those opportunities like that's how i learned everything i know mm -hmm. I, I didn't i didn't go to music school i don't have a post-secondary education but I 
I am passionate about it and I do study every day and I mm-hmm. think about it and I want to learn and I ask questions and I learn, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, you don't need to go to music school to be mm-hmm. a great musician. Just mm-hmm. try and mm-hmm. just, for me, it's really just allowing myself to be in love with music, whatever that looks like. Uh, and that seems to just deepen each day. So I know there's a lot of kids watching. Music is great. I highly recommend that that you that you learn music, whether it be a guitar or, or ukulele or piano. It doesn't really matter. Listen to music. Um, try stuff, you know. And like I said before, just don't don't give up because it doesn't feel good right away. I have a couple students right now who are in their teens, and they're like, "Do I like this? Do I not?" And I'm like, "Look." I know you can't see this now, but you will look back on your life and regret not putting time into this now. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Mm -hmm. I love it. I mean, I think that's a great note for us to end on, um, that it's it's so important to immerse yourself in music, however you're going to do it. Um, yeah. And I hope that the folks watching at home are um, enjoying enjoyed this little immersion um, on this beautiful morning. And I think uh, with that, we are going to say goodbye to our friends on Facebook. So um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks, everyone. Nice Bye. to be here with you all. <laughs>